no if if you if you don't agree. Praise the Lord. Are, are you hearing me? No, but I'm hearing you. No, 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 no one wants to comment. Don't uh, pray against trials. <laughs> this is this is what I saw. I mean, so you can agree or disagree. If tell me <laughs> yes in the chat if you agree. Tell me no if you don't agree. You don't have to explain why you agree. Just let's put it in the chat. Anyone? Okay. One agree, say so don't pray against trial. Anyone else? Agree. You don't agree. Come on. Okay, agree. Another one says agree. Anyone else? One more. Agree or don't agree. Should we pray against trial? All right. So let's move on. Now, some may agree and some may not agree. The Lord. Now, if you are one of those persons who say no, you know, you should not pray um, for trials. Scripture says that beloved, first Peter chapter four and verse 12, beloved. Think it not strange, right? Think it not strange that, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. That's one scripture. Another scripture says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, right? So these, are, these scriptures are just a point of for those persons who say, listen, we should not pray for trials um, to be tested on those things. But what if you are saying that um, you're, you're on the opposite end of this. Praise God. If you say that you should pray for trials and temptations, the scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9 to 13, after this manner, therefore pray ye. And this was the Lord Jesus speaking to his disciples when they said, Lord, um, teach us how to pray. And the Lord responded, was saying, after this man I pray, he was giving him a template. He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? And forgive us our debts as we forgive other Forgive our debts as we forgive other, our debtors, right? And lead us not into temptation. This is, this is the key line. Lead us not into temptation. So Jesus was telling the disciples that when you're praying, pray that the Lord does not lead you into any temptation, but to deliver you from evil. Right? Now, if you're following me, if you notice what I did there, for persons who will say that, um, yes, you should pray for these things, trials and testing. Um, I show you scriptures that goes against it. And for those who say, no, you should not pray, then I show you scriptures against that as well. And I deliberately did that because many times when persons are studying the scriptures, they find um, scripture that seemingly contradict each other. When and they say, you see, Bible confusing, contradict each other, and that is not necessarily true. The bar, the Bible must be studied as a whole, right? It is in harmony. But many times persons don't understand why or how to harmonize the Bible and how everything goes together. Praise the Lord. 
Is everyone hearing me clearly? Just everyone hearing you clearly. Great. Now, so how do we put this together, right? In the first part, they were saying, um, beloved, thinking that strange that concerning fairy trials, you know, Peter encouraged us, don't, don't worry about those things. James, I say, call it all joy when you find, you find fall into diverse temptations. But then Jesus was saying, listen, man, I want to pray for them things there, right? So how do you put all this together? It's simple. Jesus was telling us that do not pray for these things. Pray that the Lord lead you out of temptations and deliver you from evil. But if you do find yourself in those things, right, count it all joy, right? Because what? Knowing this, the trying of your faith work it patience. Praise God. But what I'm trying to get at tonight is that while you should pray that the Lord will lead you into temptations and any testings and trials, you know, and don't get me wrong, you know, you know, not that you will never face it as a Christian. That is expected. First Peter tell you about these things, right? But there are times when we run into testings and trials because of our mouths. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Thou art sneered with the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Sometimes the testings and the trials that we face is really because of our own big mouth, <laughs> if you want to put it that way. We get ourselves into trouble. Our mouth put ourselves into trouble. I remember the topic tonight is watch your words. Praise the Lord. But what am I speaking about? You want examples. All right. No problem. Luke 22 and verse 31. It says, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had, had desired to have you that he may save you as wheat. Now, most of us will be familiar with this passage of scripture where Jesus was talking to his disciples and he warned Peter of what the, the devil wanted to do with him. He wanted to save him as wheat. Praise the Lord. And now, many times when we read this passage of scripture, we interpret it as Jesus is telling Simon or Peter what is in the, the heart of the devil, what is his, his mind, what is his, what it is, his desire, right? But that was not necessarily what Jesus was trying to tell Peter here. It was not a mere desire, right? It was more of a request. The Greek word that it was used for hath desired in that verse of scripture, I mean, you, you can see it here. I won't even bother try to pronounce it. <laughs> That's God. But it means to demand for trial. So what Jesus was really telling Peter was that Satan had made a request of God to test him. That was what Jesus was trying to disclose to Peter. Listen, Peter, the devil he went to God. I must say, Lord, just give me, just, just give me a minute with him. Just may I tell you, say, listen, I want Peter there. Yes, man, just, just give me a minute with them. I mean, I tell you, say, I'm going deny it. Right? <laughs> that is what Jesus was telling Peter. Now, remember, right, I tell you that this topic is watch your words. Now, but even before I go that, I said that um, based on the Greek word, this is what it means, it's to demand um, for trial, right? When you look at some different translations, this is what the King James Version says. I read earlier. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may save you as wheat. The English Revised Version says, Simon, Simon, 
Behold, Satan have Satan asked to have you that he might sieve you as wheat. The Young's literal translation says, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, lo, the adversary did ask you for himself to sieve you as wheat. And finally, the amplified version says, Simon, Simon, Peter in brackets. Listen, Satan has demanded permission to sieve you, all of you like grain. So in this verse of scripture, right, he was trying to put, to highlight that the devil can request of God to put you under testing and trial, right? And because the Lord knew this, and many persons may not have understood or realized this, in the Our Father prayer, there was a line that we read earlier that says, pray that you, the Lord, that you are not lead into temptations, right? But you are delivered from evil. Now, remember, watch your words. Because after the Lord warned Peter, and said, listen, man, the, the, the devil I make requests us to have you. You think Peter would have probably learned from this or you know, take advice. But this was, this was his response. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both in prison and to death. Oh boy, I, don't, I really don't know if that's a wise thing to say at that point in time, right? Now imagine, the devil, I try to get the Lord permission to, to, to test him, you know, to show him, say, oh, here well, God, so that Peter, they'll follow you. Mm -mm. I'm not for you, right? I'm, I'm all deny you the least I could chance him get. And Peter responds, but Lord, I'm ready to go with you both to prison to death. The scripture doesn't tell us exactly when the Lord granted the permission of Satan to actually sieve Peter as wheat. Right? But I'm pretty sure this statement that Peter used most likely was used against him. Because if the devil had request, he must say, Lord, you hear what I'm saying? God, you hear what man say? Man say, I'm ready for both you, both in prison and in death. I don't believe him, you know. Put him through the testing and see what I'll go on. Right? Most likely the devil used his very words of Peter against him to get permission to save him as wheat. And what did the Lord respond? And Jesus responded, said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And, if, and we, we know the story well. When Jesus was taken into questioning and when he was in questioning and they were saying that, you know, that a lady come and said, aren't you one of his disciples? He just said, no, man. What that about? Jesus, the first man you don't hear me. <laughs> All right? And I want to come again. No, mom. No, 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 no. I sure I see with. I said, brother, I can't hear him. I don't know him. I, I don't know him. And I want to say, no, no. Your speech will be true. Your soul like him. Like, and Peter start curse. I said, no, man. I don't know him. Right? Watch your words. Because your words can get you into trouble. <laughs> right? No. And it's not only just what you speak can get you into trouble. Right? Because we have to realize the enemy that we serve is very cunning. And he will use different means and means and method to get to us. Right? Because the very words that we use or speak, he will bring it before the Lord and say, God, Based on what so and so said, let me test them to see if I'm true. Come, a feast I lie to my telling. 
it doesn't matter. <laughs> the devil will do whatever he can to get at you. Yeah, you remember, um, oh, sorry, uh, just to point out, this is Luke, the uh, type of error, <laughs> Luke 22 and verse 34. But remember how, all right, you may know of when, when persons um, is, is arresting individuals, they will say, um, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. It's a similar thing. We have to watch what we speak because the enemy who is the accuser of the brethren, we use our words against us in the court of law, right? And as I say, it's not just things we say, but also songs we sing. There is a, 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 a very popular song right now, um, Refiner, um, featuring Chance, Chandler Moore and other person, right? And in the chorus says, I want to be tried by fire, purified. Now, I'm not really a singer, but you know, bless God. Now, these are some very dangerous words to be singing, you know? <laughs> I want to be tried by fire, purified. Now, this is us, my humble opinion. I don't think this was inspired by God. Because if Jesus is telling us to pray that you are not led into temptation and trials, and then he wouldn't have inspired us to tell you that I, I want to be tried by fire. That is leading you into temptation. And that very song that many of us sing as Christians, that they ever bring before God, and you hear, you say, Lord, Hear where my sin. Hear where sister so and so has sin. I want to be tried by fire. Now remember, the Lord, <laughs> you create the fruit of the lips, so you know. Grant me the request that I may try them as fire with by fire. I will get into some problems in our life. I will say, God, why me? What are you singing the song? Watch. Your words. Watch your words. Right? Do not be rash in your words. Even the songs you have to sing, you have to be very careful. Because our enemy is very cunning. And him have these agents out there. We make them sing gospel song and we take, we take it as, as gospel. And it's not really gospel. It sounds like gospel. We sing it. And in it are lines that can get us into trouble. So yes, Lord, they hear them say that, you know, they want to be tried by fire, right? Here's another one. Praise is what I do. Hallelujah. And now here's the thing. This man is saying that he, he praise God. I, I know no, we should praise God, you know. Yes, I agree that we should praise God in good time and bad time, right? But let's be honest. It's hard to praise God is when, when you go through some trials. It, it does hard, right? It is hard. Now, that being said, we should try, no matter what situation we are in, to give God praise. But that doesn't mean you and your part to be saying, Lord, I vow to praise you. Right? Through the good and the bad. I praise you, whether happy or sad. Like, you're, you're really listening to your words that you're saying? Because when we say this, you know, you better be sure that the enemy is, is going to rehearse our words before God and say, God, you hear what I'm saying? Make, give, give me a chance. Let me, let me bring some sad time in their life to really pour if they're going to praise you in the sad time. Now, remember what I said before. Don't, don't take me, don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Good times, bad times, give God praise. But be not sneered with your words. You know, and if you open up your mouth and say, God, I, I vow to praise you in the good time, but I know. Let your actions prove itself. Don't run in with your words. But what the word of God tells us, right? Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 2 to 4, it says, be 
not rush with your with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God for God is in heaven and thou upon earth therefore let thy words be few for a dream cometh through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words you see scripture tell you Fool is known by the multitude of his words. Run, I run him out. Now watch his words. Verse 4 says, For when thou voice a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Praise God. Remember what I said. Be not rash with your words. Watch your words. Because our words can get us in trouble. These are some of the things that the enemy used against us. Because he, many times he wants to test us, he wants to try us, and, and God wants to, to bring out a certain things, right? Yes, with every testing and trials and temptation, the Lord make how we have escaped. But some things he may not have wanted to go down in the first place. You may not have wanted to go to certain things. But because of your word that you spoke, the enemy used it against us and gets the permission to save us as wheat. Praise God. I'll give you another example. How many persons remember Jephthah? Jephthah he was a judge in Israel. And he was, um, he was, scripture, uh, if my memory served me correctly, he was the first one of his father, but he was um, of a strange woman. Um, he wasn't, it wasn't a, what you would have called a bastard child. He wasn't from his wife. And he got kicked out of the house, you know, when it, other brothers grew up, they kicked him out and said, you won't inherit this house of our father because the daughter of a strange woman. And there was some army that came against the nation and they eventually called Jephthah and said, listen, we need you to defend us. Jephthah said, all right, if I defend you, will you make me your head up? And he said, yeah, they said, yes. We swear that we will make you the head, right? If you come and defend us from this army. Now, here's the thing now. Jephthah made a vow to God. And here you go, um, chapter 11 on Judges, it says, and Jephthah vowed a vow unto the Lord and said, if thou shalt without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands. Then it shall be that whatsoever cometh forth of the doors of my house to meet me, then I return in peace. When I return in peace from the children of, of Ammon, surely shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. All right? So Jephthah made a vow that, listen, God, if you deliver the enemy that is coming against us, right, that is warring against us, then surely I will give whatever coming out of my house. First thing that come out of my house, it shall be a burnt offering, right? The man made a vow, you know, and what, what the scripture tells us. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few, for a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Right? When thou voice the bow, Unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast bowed. So, 
about like that. I mean, person may ask the question, is Jephthah a fool? Well, I'll leave you to be the judge of that, but that one thing I can say is that scripture says that there were vain men that were around Jephthah, that were following Jephthah. And it, they were saying that birds were fed a flock together. Quite possibly, Jephthah was not totally upright. Though he was a judge in Israel, right? So he made this vow unto God. What happened? Let's read. It says, so Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them. And the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he smote them from Aurora, even till thou come to Minnit, even 20 cities unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Thus, the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Right? So God delivered the children of the enemy into the hand of Jephthah. God did this part. But watch this now. Verse 34 says, And Jephthah came to Mis Mis Mispah and to his house. And behold, his daughter mm, came out to meet him with timbrels and with dances. And she was his only child. Beside her, he had neither son nor daughter. All right? And it came to pass when he saw her, he rent his clothes and said, Ah, alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that troubled me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. This, remember, Jephthah made a vow earlier, and he said, whatever comes out of my house, if you give me the victory, Lord, whatever comes out of my house, I am going to offer it up for a bird offering. Now, a statement like that is very rash. It's very rash very foolish because if you're going to offer up a burnt offering i mean this if it, it i mean sheep don't it's not going to be living in your house you're going to have it in the sheep fold so who do you expect to be coming out of your house when you come back who right so to make a statement like that was is very rash very foolish as the scripture says Right, so his daughter came out. God did his part, God did his part. Right, so now, Jephthah, what are you going to do? Right, would you offer up your, your daughter as a, a burnt sacrifice? What would you have done? And I want to hear from some persons. I want to hear if you were in this position of Jephthah. God did his part, right? He did his part. He delivered your enemies into your hand. What would you do? Would you offer up your only child as a burnt offering to fulfill your end of the bargain? What would you do? Someone, anyone, comment. No, 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 not all at once, you know, bless the Lord. Just. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. You know the truth. Just stick your word. I think I can give a lot of others to, 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 to say something. See, um, I see, I see Donnett Finley come into the, the chat and she was saying, this is a hard choice. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is a hard choice. I, I agree with you. Um. Jephthah, he, he offered up his daughter as a, as a burnt sacrifice. He did that. But for you, would you? Anyone else want to comment? Would you or would you not? Um, good night. 
Right. I am not an expert of the Bible, so forgive me if I do not get the names correctly. Okay. But in Genesis, where um, I don't know if it was um, I can't even remember his name. But the, the the person that 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 the Lord told to go to the mountain and bring his son as the offering. Abraham. And, yes. Thank you. When when Abraham, Abraham was in the mountains and he was supposed to give his son as a burnt offering, remember the Lord actually used his father as a test to see if he would give his own child. So if you are living by example of what God has done in the past, even though even though what what had happened to Abraham might wouldn't have happened to you in the case. Maybe you would have just given up your daughter like black because that's what you said you were gonna do. But if we had lived off the experience of the old testament in Genesis with Abraham, possibly you would have gotten spared your daughter just because of your faith and the trust that you put in God. All right. <laughs> That is, that is a good response. Good response. I wasn't going to go to Abram. I mean, I, I kind of deliberately left it out <laughs> of the slides. <laughs> but since you brought it up, I think I, I'm going to have to deal with it. All right. Um, in James, the book of James, it says that James chapter one and verse thirty. It says. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Right? Now, here's the thing. If God cannot tempt any man with evil, the first thing you have to ask is, how was it then God was able to tempt Abraham? Because the scripture clearly tells us that, you know, God tempted Abraham. Or you could say, try, put him through a test or a trial. Right, and he told him, Offer up thy son, thy only son, Isaac, as a burnt sacrifice. And I, I wondered about it how was it this possible? Because there has to be an harmony between the, the word of God and you know, God said, Him don't tempt any man. So, how is it then now we, he would have asked Abraham to tempt? And the question you have to first identify is what is considered to be evil, right? What defines something as evil? Now, what defines something as evil is whether or not it goes against the word of God. Praise God. That is what it is defined as evil. Now, at the time when God said to Abraham, go and offer up your son as a burnt sacrifice, there was no word whether spoken or written anywhere as any reference that said God did not like or, or hated child sacrifice. There was nothing there. Nothing existed. So in a sense, at that point in time, technically, now watch me, when God was, out, when it was trying Abraham, it was not considered to be evil. Right? Now, because God had not yet revealed his will concerning that. In, um, in Deuteronomy, I think I have the reference here. I think it's verse, chapter 29 and verse 29. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, it says, I'm just paraphrasing. It says that the Lord God, um, let, let, me, let me find it so I can quote it. Uh, okay, yes. Um, it's actually Deuteronomy 29 and verse 29, chapter 29 and verse 29. It says, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed unto us belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words in this law. In a sense, what he's trying to say is that what God is really judging you on is based on the things that he has revealed. So there are things that he may require of you at that particular point in time, but if he has not revealed it, 
he's not going to judge you on it. At that point in time, all his will, all the things that he required of man to do was not yet revealed. Um, that is why um, part of it in Acts chapter 17 and verse 20, 29, it says, for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven image or graven by art and man's device. And verse 30 says, at the, at the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now he commanded everyone everywhere to repent. In other words, God pretty much like in closing eyes to it. Praise God. Because this thing was not yet revealed as yet. So it was not considered to be evil when God was tempting Abraham because there was nothing revealed. Remember, whatever voice speaking to you, you ha it has to line up with the word of God. And there was nothing in the word of God that existed at that time that was revealed that shows you that it was evil. Right? And when I say that, I have to also point out because I know that person is going to ask the question, if that is true, then what about those who were committing all manner of evil back then? You know, would they have gotten away? You know, would they be considered to be innocent because there was no, all uh, the word of the law was not revealed as yet? No, <laughs> they wouldn't get away. Because there's a scripture that says that in Romans chapter 2 and verse 14, when the Gentiles, which have not the law, we're speaking about the Mosaic law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, our law unto themselves, we show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. In other words, your conscience would have been your judge. Now everything may be written on your conscience, but there is enough things written on your conscience as a man. Whether or not you know of the law, you don't know anything contained in the law, this is what the scriptures say, you, don't, you never hear about these things, you never hear about Jesus, there is enough things written on your conscience to know, say, hey, well, it's not right for me to kill, it's not right for me to steal. Right, you, you know right from wrong. This is what the scripture is saying. Now, maybe not everything is revealed, so some things you know the Lord have to pretty much pet it out in the word of God for us. So you only get away, praise God. But at that point in time, God had not revealed his will concerning child sacrifice, right? But here's the thing now: Jephthah is a totally different case. Jephthah knew, or at least should know, know the word of God. Because at this point in time, the law was then given and God made it clear and plain. Do not offer up child sacrifice. He don't like those things, right? So Jephthah, in fact, let me put it this way. The vow that Jephthah made was actually invalid. The vow that Jephthah made was invalid. Why is it? In Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 18, it says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now, the thing that you have to understand is, we aim to keep the spirit of the law, right? And not just following the letter when it comes to the word of God. Now, there is a principle behind of this, behind this verse of scripture. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord, thy God, for any vow. In other words, in fulfilling your vow, you should not do anything that is sinful to, fill, to fulfill your promise. That is the principle behind this verse. Because the Lord tells him, say, listen, you shouldn't commit the word on. And tell him straight, say, I don't want these things. So if you made a vow and you're going to pay, you're going to say, but you don't have any money, but you're going to commit prostitution in order to get the money to pay your vow to God, 
because the scripture says, better that thou shouldest vow, if thou vow, you should pay. Then, no, you're in the wrong. God doesn't want that. So, when Jephthah, in his rash decision, in his mouth, made a vow unto God that he would offer up anything that would come off his house. Other words, that was a human sacrifice because his only humans coming out of his house. Right? That vow was invalid because God would not have accepted a sinful thing like that. Yeah, God delivered the enemy to his hand, but that has nothing to do with the vow. It would have been invalid. It's invalid. <laughs> so, he was in the wrong. Praise God. So, again, you have to be careful of the words that you speak. You have to watch your words because your words can get into trouble. And the Bible warns us. It says in Proverbs 13 and verse 3, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth his, open it wide his lips shall have destruction. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, James 1 verse 9, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Proverbs 18 and verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever that may be coming of it. Right? Isaiah 57 and verse 9, he says, I, speaking to the Lord, create the fruit of the lips. So the things that you speak, right, God will create. So you have to be ensure that you're speaking good things and not speaking destructions. And, J, and finally, Matthew 12 and verse 37 says, By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. So the things that you say, I believe there's another scripture um, that says every idle words that man speak will bring, to, will bring into judgment on that day. So you see? You have to be very, very careful. Watch your words. And I just want to leave you with these final words <clears throat> by Benjamin Franklin. He says, well done is better than well said. And naturally, um, I believe he was speaking about it is better to, you know, let your um, the action speak louder than your words. You know, do the work. And in that same breath, I would like to take the interpretation and say, listen, don't be rash with your words. Don't be quick to speak and utter things out of your mouth that will get you into trouble. It's better to prove your loyalty to God by your actions than by uttering words about, Lord, if this come and this happen, I'll be able to serve you and all this. Let your actions prove it. Don't, be not quick. Be not rash with your words. Praise God. Now this time, um, I, I, I'm going to open the floor for there be any questions that person may have or they may want to ask pertain to our lesson tonight. Any question? Anyone everyone understand everything? We can unmute themselves and go ahead. Praise the Lord here. You can unmute and, and go ahead. Your question, we, we, we all understand everything that I was saying very clearly. Bless God. Scripture was clear. Okay, fine. If there are no further questions, if there are no questions, you know, Pray that it was that because understood. I am going to hand over back to Minister Smith. 
God bless you. Um, Brother Sheroy, I don't have a question, but I do have a request. Is it possible you could share the slides in the group? Sure, no problem. Elfina did not catch all I'd like to go read over. Um, I, well, I can share the slide, but it's on Minister Smith has streamed this live. So um, I believe he can oh, share it. So it's on YouTube. It's on his Facebook page, Mommy. right, Minister Smith? Mommy. Sorry? I'm going to also stream it on um, um, YouTube. But yes, okay. it's on my page. Okay. All right. So you, you will share the link. But I will also share the slides in the group. You can share the slides in the group. Okay. Bless the Lord. So I, I, I hand over to you now, sir. Praise God. That is a very informative lesson, Brother Shara. Praise God. Give it a sleep, unmute our mics, and give God the glory and the praise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God the glory. We give God the glory. We give God the glory. Praise God. It was David who said in Psalms 19 and verse 14 that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Praise God. I like the, the word. Listen about what your words. Be careful of what you say. Scripture also give us the information. Let your Yea be yea, yea nay be nay. Praise God. Just Jeff to make a vow. The thing that I love about the story about Jeff to he make a vow. He opened his mouth. Praise God. And he made a vow to God. Praise God. And when <laughs> the time come to to repay that vow, praise God. He, he, he did, he didn't, he didn't slack. Praise God. He said, he still told his daughter, I made a vow to God that I can't turn back. Amen. Praise God. He stand by his words, although it was difficult. Um, he stand by his words. Praise God. So I'll give God the glory and the honor. Thank the Lord for this lesson. Praise God. We uh, need to watch our words. Praise God. We need to watch our vows that we have made to God. Praise God. We need to watch our words that we speak to each other. Praise God. All of these are very important Listen, for us to take note of and to watch ourselves and to search our hearts. And we praise God. As we are about to close, let us sing the song. As the deer panted for the water do my soul longing after thee. You are Lord, oh my heart, desire and I long to worship you. If you know it can help me see if you're a better singer than me. You are Lord, alone are my strength, my yes. You mm. alone does my spirit feel. You mm. alone are mm. my desire. Desire yes. and I long to work. Mm. One more time. You the dear. alone. Mm. Are my strength, yes, my, my shield. You, you alone, may my, my spirit heal you. You, you alone, oh my, my heart, heart. desire, my and I love to. to one more time. As a deer, as the as the deer panted for the water, who my soul longed after thee. You have all my heart, my heart. 
those that are still coming out on platform praise god but, uh, praise god we are wrapping up tonight praise god we give god the glory of an excitement um bible study tonight about watching our words praise god you can watch a recap praise god on facebook and i'm going to put it on youtube for those that didn't get the chance praise god for all you are late praise god but we give god thanks that you're still come on the platform amen praise god at this time we're going to be um, wrapping up, praise God. I'm going to ask, uh, praise God, ask Sister Daly, praise God, your mic is on. I'm going to ask you just to dismiss us, Sister Daly, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks for tonight. God, we lift you up, we praise you, we thank you for your many blessings. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, to us. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All we have needed your hands are provided. Great is your faithfulness towards us. Lord, tonight we just want to give you thanks for this Bible study. We want to give you thanks for your male servant, Brother Sharoy, Lord. Thank you for speaking through him. Lord, thank you for giving us words of wisdom. Oh, God, words for us to think on. Hallelujah, God. You say we should hear your words in our hearts that we may not sin against you. And Lord, tonight I just want, want us to be doers, just, not just listeners of the word, but doers also, Lord, help us. Whatever we do, do in words and in deeds. Hallelujah tonight, God, we just wanna give you thanks for every member on this platform tonight, Lord. We thank you for our visitors. God, we pray that you will strengthen their hearts God Almighty, we pray that those who are not saved, that they will capture your words in their heart, Lord God, and make a change, a turn around before time turns to eternity. Because God, eternity is too long for us to be wrong. So tonight, God, as the signs are everywhere, it's alarming, it's getting louder. God, I pray that your people, God, that we will seek you and dig deep and have our lamp trim and burning bright. That God, if you should put in your appearance, we will be ready. Whenever you put in your appearance, God will be ready. Uh, and if we should be hushed out of this world, God, with everything that is happening, these are perilous times. God, perilous times are here that we will be ready the whole Focus is for us to be ready, not getting ready, but be ready. So God help us as we go from day to day to lift the bloodstained banner high and to let you be our everything, let you be our focus. Oh God, because everything else can wait. But Lord, we must have you. We must have you in our life. You must. You must be effective in our lives, God, and help us to shine bright in some dark areas, in some dark places. Oh, God, help us to lift you up that men can see your good work and glorify you. Lord, we give you thanks again, and we say amen. And if there's anything we fail of asking tonight, 
you not to grant us because you are the God who gives good gifts, shaken together, pressing down and running over. And we say thanks in that name that is above every other name. And everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen.